Alright, so this is going to be a little bit of a weird video, and I say that because I played, and that's because I kind of screwed up. This weekend got really, really hectic, really, really fast, because I thought, well, I'd shoot most of this video on Friday, and I'd be able to get it done on Friday, because the new motherboard was going to come in, and it was going to be here in the morning, because it was, you know, UPS next day, and unfortunately that didn't pan out, and UPS took until literally the end of day to get it out to me, even though they literally drove by my house multiple times. So, yeah, then after that, things just got really busy, and I didn't get a chance to shoot any more of the video, and I just wanted my computer back up and running, as you can see it is right now. So, let's get into what exactly happened and what went down. So... I got the motherboard and I pretty much went through the first part of removing the motherboard from my old C97 board and 4690K because I've had this kicking around forever now. This is a Ryzen 5 1600 and my good friend Alan gave this to me because he didn't want to deal with eBay and selling it there and there's literally no market for this stuff where he is on Craigslist. So he figured he'd do me a solid and just give me this. And then he gave me some RAM for a really cheap price too. So at that point, the only thing that I needed to do was get a motherboard, which today is the day, well, not today, but the this Thursday is the day I did it because I have a credit card, not like a real adult. And I figured, you know what, at this point, I'm just gonna have to take the hit and buy it on the credit card. Because I otherwise I would have to sell my current, well, my then current board run to fries and hope they have the one I'm looking for in stock and if you're even remotely aware of what's going on with fries right now you probably know they're not doing so hot so depending on them having what I want in stock is probably gonna be just a big pile of no so I just said I'll take the temporary hit I'll get put it on the credit card and pay it off the minute, the minute my my old stuff sells so I did that and a friend of mine, or a friend of a friend, ended up needing some stuff I had, and she was willing to buy it for a good price. So I sold my spare MagSafe adapter and a couple of other things, and ended up paying off the $95 I spent on the motherboard, because I got it open box, so I got a hell of a deal on it. And I paid off the credit card already, so I was already ahead, and I had yet to sell my stuff. So I sold it, and I actually sold it on my local Craigslist, which was shocking, because just, I didn't think there was much of a you know, custom PC market around here, but every time I put up PC parts, well, they sell, actually, like within a couple days. I'm very surprised. So I don't have to go on eBay and I don't have to deal with people throwing an iNAT at me, which is item not as described, or something like that to scam me and I don't have to deal with that. And I personally, I've just, Swappa is as far as I will ever go as far as selling online is concerned. So, yeah. I got this and I was finally able to put it to use. But it doesn't stop there. Because I sold my old parts at pretty much a profit because I didn't expect to be able to pocket that money, so to speak. So I started thinking, well, maybe I can upgrade to something better. Because as you, as you know, this is a first-gen Ryzen. First-gen Ryzen was pretty good, but it was not the best, obviously. And AMD really kind of got it together with Ryzen Plus, or Zen Plus, and Zen 2, which is the Ryzen 3000 series. So I thought maybe I should just do an, kind of an in-place upgrade from a Ryzen 5 1600 to a 3600 x and really just began thinking about it but then i was like you know my credit card's pretty much paid off you know i've been on haswell for five years well about five years because i got my haswell my first haswell system in 2015 it would keep going if i wanted it to if this opportunity never presented itself so i thought for a minute i was like you know what it may be a stretch financially but i kind of want to make sure i'm future proof because that 4790k that i bought in 2015. It's still going strong to this day. It's not in my possession anymore. It's, it's actually the CPU and Ryan's custom built now, but it's, it's still going pretty strong. So it's, it's lasted forever and I want this to be kind of the same thing. So as you can probably see, this CPU is no longer actually in my system. This is actually going to get sold as soon as it can on Craigslist. I already have it listed, so we'll see what happens. But pretty much, I decided this is going to be my Christmas present, my Black Friday gift, because, you know, sometimes you like to go YOLO on Black Friday, and I ended up 
with a 3700X, which is way more than I thought I would ever be able to get. But I figured, you know what, I should be able to make the payments just fine and I have some other stuff up for sale that should be able to pay this down. So yeah, this pretty much was a hell of a purchase. And what's kind of cool is it actually saves me a little bit of money too, because this actually came with three months of Game Pass Ultimate. So <laughs> I don't have to pay Microsoft for three months, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, this was super awesome. And I was able to even just get it today after I sold my motherboard and CPU, because Best Buy, I mean, it's pretty hard to get a Ryzen 3 CPU for anything under MSRP right now, because the supply is still a bit constrained from what I read, and there's just nobody returning these things, and there's no way to buy them open box because of that. So I just went to Best Buy, and they actually had them in my local Best Buy. So I just rolled in, bought it, and here we are. It's already in my system and ticking along just nice. And I just have to say, as a post kind of postscript to the whole thing, it's really shocking just how much you notice. I, I want to say it's like the performance impact from Spectre and Meltdown, because this processor does have Spectre fixed at the hardware level, I believe. And it's just, it's crazy, because like, my 4690K was no slouch, obviously, but this thing is just stupid quick. And just everything I do on my computer now is just much, much faster. And the reason I knew I had to upgrade too was because my, I think games are starting to get a little more advanced in the CPU department, so my good old 4690K was starting to get a bit old and needed to be replaced. I'm now back on AMD because it's kind of funny because I left them in 2015 because <sighs> Bulldozer was such a trash heap, oh my goodness. And thankfully Ryzen's awesome. Without further ado, let's get into the, you know, the, the pre-game of this whole thing and it is going to cut off suddenly because I never filmed the rest of it, which is unfortunate, but I it's something I still rather would get out there because I know somebody, I forget his name on Instagram, but a really avid fan of mine was asking if I'd make a video on this and this is pretty much the best I can do, unfortunately, so I hope you enjoy. So, well guys, we have come full circle because this has been a long time coming. I'm finally moving to Ryzen, and long time viewers may remember back in 2015, I made a little vlog called I'll See You Intel. I'm not sure if that's even still up, but it was me moving off an AMD FX8120 onto a Intel i7-4690 or 4790K build, and that was a very, very nice move because AMD had been kind of just stagnant. They were throwing more cores at the problem without really thinking about how actual performance was going to be. So more CPU bound tasks just absolutely suck. And most of the FX series just got spanked by older Intel hardware, like even Sandy Bridge. So this is kind of weird because we're kind of coming full circle. Haswell for Intel has kind of been, it's kind of the new Sandy Bridge. It's still a really viable platform in performance. It has a hell of a lot of staying power. Like my current setup is a 4690K and that thing is still chooch along perfectly fine. So this pretty much is me getting the hell off of Intel because Everything after uh, Haswell, at least up until I believe Coffee Lake, just kind of sucked and then Intel got hit with Meltdown and Spectre and it just basically Intel kind of just stumbled really hard and when AMD came back swinging with Ryzen, they just didn't know what the hell to do. And Ryzen, AMD with Ryzen has been doing some really good work. They actually... Their motherboards, the motherboard chipsets for most, I believe the B415X470s are actually forwards compatible, or the CPUs are backwards compatible with the newest Ryzen CPUs. This is a Ryzen 1, the first generation Ryzen. It's kind of, it's really confusing because they call it Ryzen 1, 2, and 3, but then you have Ryzen f uh, 3, 5, and 7, and now 9. It's kind of hard. But this is the first generation Ryzen 5 1600, and this is pretty much just kind of a starting point, because how I got this is my good friend Alan, he upgraded to the Ryzen 3 CPUs, and 
he said, well, I'm not going to make a whole lot of money selling this on eBay. So I'll tell you what, if you want it, you can have it for free. And he agreed to also sell me some RAM for a really good price. And those were really the only two things stopping me from going on to Ryzen. Because I actually tried to do this in 2018, only to find out that RAM was stupidly expensive. And I kind of kiboshed the whole thing. Now that RAM has come down in price, thankfully, this is a lot more viable. So yeah, let's go ahead and just, this is kind of going to be the pre-gaming, because the other thing that didn't come with this was a board, and I had to kind of scrounge around for a board, and thankfully I just became a an adult. Uh, I'm kidding about that, because anybody who knows my age knows I'm actually very well into adulthood, but I finally managed to get a credit card, and one of the first acts I did was to finance out a purchase to get a board to put this into so I could finally get this going because otherwise I would have had to basically sell my 4690K, run to fries as fast as I possibly could, hope they have a Ryzen board there and buy it and bring it back home because I don't want any downtime on my main computer. So let's go ahead and just open this bad boy right up. See what we got in here. So this is going to be very much a starting point because unfortunately I'm not going to have a good air cooler. Well, I, I hear these are actually good air coolers for stock, but yeah, this is what I'm going to be using from the get-go. Just the stock AMD cooler. It will be good enough for what I'm trying to do here. I'm not going to overclock this right away, but again, I just need a starting point. I'm going to build upon this over time. I eventually do want to upgrade to one of the Ryzen 3000 series chips and again this is the perfect starting point so we got the stock cooler and we got our cpu here i kind of miss when they actually used to give you the cpus in like these tin packages yeah there it is ryzen 5 1600 oh gives me gives me flashbacks to the good old days of the fx chip literally looks the same, heat spreader looks the same. Another cool thing about Ryzen is they actually solder the IHS onto the chip or the die. Unlike Intel, which I don't think, I don't know if they've started doing that as of recent. If they've started uh, actually doing it again. But I know AMD has always done it and it's super nice because you don't have to worry about delitting and replacing the thermal compound underneath the IHS because who oh boy that sucks and then we got some vengeance lpx ddr4 and this is 2666 megahertz so alan has told me that these are pretty much not going to be the best performers and i may see some reduced performance because apparently amd's infinity fabric or whatever they call it does rely heavily on memory speed so i may not see a whole I may see some degraded performance, but again, this is just a starting point to get off of Intel and onto an AMD system. Once I get all this in, I can start building upon what I already have. So, due to not having the board yet, we're just going to go ahead and through the magic of video editing, hopefully UPS doesn't lose my board. So, yeah, through the magic of video editing, it's going to be a full night for me, but... For you guys, it'll be a few seconds. Hey guys, Future Chris here. Just quickly cutting in to explain this next clip because, yeah, I didn't really do much to talk about why I explained that whole piece on top of my case. And it's because this is where my UPS usually sits. And the problem with moving my computer down onto the floor, this is where my old Dell Power Edge that I got from Ryan used to sit and the UPS would sit on top of it. So when I moved the power edge elsewhere, the UPS had to go somewhere and well, I made it work on top of the case with this piece of metal as you're going to see here in a few seconds as I explain it, as I pull it off the case when we take this all apart. Well, if you ever wondered why or how I made the UPS work with sitting on top of this case, this is how. This is an old monitor, rear monitor bracket from a uh, POS system. Kind of reappropriated for 
put in here because it gave me enough clearance for air to still come out the top of the case and just low enough clearance to fit under my desk fully because this 600T is a unit of a case. It's really tall and I, even though this thing, this case is kind of old, I still really like it. And I know I should probably buy something different, but again, I don't know. There's just something about the 600T that just really endears me to it. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just, I guess I should pull this off if it'll come off. There we go. And I don't think this is gonna wanna come off easily. I don't even think I need, I'm not even really need to mess with this. The only issue, the only, the one of the reasons why I am considering replacing this case, even though I like it, is because the USB ports on this case are kind of garbage. As we can see, as you may be able to see here, I have these two ports here taped off because they broke and, well, yeah, it's kind of the way it goes. But yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing on its side and get the motherboard out. This is gonna be kind of awkward because I can't really think of a good angle to get on here, so I'm gonna just try our best here. And here is the system in all of its glory. This power supply has been an OG since I got it. I believe that was from Ryan. That thing actually had liquid spilled into it, and after cleaning it out, giving it a very good thorough once over, the thing still works flawlessly. So, kind of as we go along, I'm just going to give some commentary on the system because this system has been pretty much my mainstay. It's been like this for like, since 2016, I believe. And yeah, this, this has been just an OG system. I've really been pretty happy with it, except with the motherboard. The motherboard's been all right. The motherboard, to its credit has been somewhat all right. But it has this weird quirk where it takes like two minutes sometimes to start up. And by that, I mean, it'll just hang at the Windows logo and it'll take forever to start up. I really think it's a hardware problem and I don't think it's my SSD because the SSD performs pretty good in other systems, but not this one. And it will go, it follows pretty much any Windows version I put onto this thing. So Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, and all the versions of 10 that I've used. So yeah, we have three one terabyte drives. One of them is my game drive. One of them is my media drive. And this is all mostly full. And one of these is actually an OG drive. And I believe it's this one up here. Yeah. That is the OG drive up there because that thing has been with my custom built since I started building this machine back in 2010. So that drive has been an OG and man, HGST do not make them like that anymore. So without further ado, let's jump in. And... Now this also, this card has been an OG as well because I got this card. This is a GTX 1060 6 gig and I got this back in 2016 as well. And this card has been an OG of a card as well because I got it before the great graphics card shortage of, I believe, 2017, 2018, I can't remember. But I got open box for like less than 200 bucks. And this has been the, the best card I've ever had in my life. It still handles current games like Metro Exodus. And no, before any great comments, I did not buy it on the Epic Games Store. Game Pass is a great, great thing. But yeah, this card has handled everything I've thrown at it with no complaining. I've been super happy with it. I've been wanting to like try and upgrade the GTX 10, 1080, but I can't just justify it. Cause I, I, my monitor, I run a three, a triple head 1080p monitor setup, and for 1080p gaming, the 1060 is just boss. Yeah. 
Also, I know some people may see it from here and they're going to point out my uh, Draga 1-esque mounting for the SSD. I kind of just let it sit in this void in the drive bays here. And that's because these are not easy to find. These, I don't have spares for these. And for whatever reason, Corsair has stopped selling these drive brackets for the 600T. So... If I need to put another hard drive in here, which I may well do, I want to make sure I have the room for it. I don't want to blow one of these on an SSD. So given the SSDs are, you know, solid state, it's not going to matter that it's floating around in there because this computer is stationary. It's not going to move around a whole hell of a lot. So it's kind of the sacrifice I had to make. Alright, 